Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 82 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Oh boy, I have got a bunch of cool stuff going on. Uh, today, I'd like to finish up this uh, plant farm here that we've got set up. So, last episode, we set up this automated dropper system here that will automatically plant all the seeds that we're going to need. And I know we're going to definitely need a lot of uh, lightning plants and a lot of squid plants. Do we have creeper plants here? I think we might, might not, I don't know. I know we want a lot of creeper plants. I guess I don't have any of those. I don't know. Let's see. What do we got set up in these droppers? Squid, slime, which we, you know, I think we said we didn't want to have slimes anymore, didn't we? Uh, flying flowers. Actually, that's okay. Let's see here. So, let's see. Slimes. We wanted to get rid of slimes. Because slimes are just not going to be good for us right now. There we go. Uh, remember I told you, well, at least slime and potion shouldn't go together because when certain potion effects are applied to slimes, that's a bad thing. What do we got here? This guy's set up for potion. This guy's set up for propulsion, repulsion, lightning, and creeper. All right, cool. So we do have creeper plants somewhere in here. Uh, as you can see, obviously, you know, we don't have a lot of hooked up. Remember, I also told you guys that if your AE system isn't really capable of supplying the demands, then you might have a little bit of a problem with tick rate because um, these interface blocks don't like it when they can't supply the items that they're meant to supply. So that's another thing we want to keep an eye on. But today, I want to work on harvesting these plants. And I've been kind of racking my brain, like, what's a good way to automate the harvesting of these plants. And the reason that I'm having a trouble with it is mostly because um, most of the automated plant types like golems and MFR can't recognize these guys as plants. Now I could do it with drones, but the main problem with that is, um, well, items just getting all over the place. I'd like a way to kind of automate it a bit. And the other problem I have is that once we do automate it, when this plant seeds drop on the ground, they're going to replant themselves, and it's kind of going to make a mess all over the place, and we'll eventually have just all kinds of, you know, improperly planted stuff just everywhere. It'll be a giant mess. So I don't want to break these plants with something that's going to drop the item entity on the ground, because if that happens, then we're going to be in trouble. What part of Oh, epic mana restoration. Neat. <laughs> it's so funny watching that stuff. All right, so how are we going to handle this? What block can we use to harvest these plants, kind of do it all at once, and make sure that the item entities, the seeds, don't drop on the ground? Because if they do, they'll get replanted. I came up with an idea. It took me a little bit, but I did come up with something. Any guesses? Any guesses at all? Okay, then I'm going to have to tell you. MFFS. That's right. We can use, similar to the MFFS system that is clearing the path in front of my uh, mining well system, I can create something that will automatically pick up all this stuff, and it's going to be the force field projector. All I need to do is insert an item collection module and a disintegration module, and what we'll get is um, a, a system that will automatically harvest everything for us. So that sounds pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get ourselves some stuff. So we're definitely going to want not the custom mode, but we want a cube mode. And we're definitely going to need a few more of these focus matrixes. So let's get like a stack of them. That'll do for now. Cube mode, and then we're also going to want, um, let's see, MFFS. We'll definitely want some translation and scale modules. So I don't know if we need many more translations, but we'll definitely need a lot of scales. As a matter of fact, I probably want a few more than that. So that should be cool. If that's not enough, well, we'll figure it out, right? All right, so let's see what we've got down here. If we were to hook up, hmm, where do I want to put this thing? You know where I'll put it? I know where I'll put it. I'll put it right next to the turtle so that the turtle can do both things at once. Um, I'll put the force field module here, boom. And what we should start seeing is this guy filling up with power because we've got our power thing down there. Kind of send an energy over. Cool. So that thing's getting its power. What we want to place in here is cube mode, right? And let's see. I do want it to be directional. So north, let's see. If we translate one north. Let's 
let's get this guy set up properly. This won't be easy. But I think I can manage to do it if we can make sure that I've got my corners cleared. Alright, that should do. Oh, let me sleep through the night real quick. And then we'll finish this up. Because I like doing stuff in the daytime. There we go. Okay. And we're going to want this to output to an adjacent inventory. Ooh, being next to the turtle might be a problem. So let's make sure the turtle's inventory is full. And then we'll also have a chest here. So that he can't output to the turtle's inventory. The turtle doesn't need an inventory for what it's doing. So for now, you know what? Maybe I'll make an under chest and we'll make it blue, blue, blue. How's that sound? Do I have any blue wool? I do. Cool. Makes that a lot easier. Am I putting a second ender chest mere blocks away from this ender chest? Yes. Yes, I am. Because I'm lazy and I have plenty of resources. And I'm not too worried about it. Okay. So we'll turn you off. So we're scaling it north one. Well, we don't really want that. We actually want to scale it east one. So translate it east. If we activate that, that's probably inside that block. So if we translated it east another time, now we should have it there. Now we want to scale it east. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we want nine scale modules to the east. See? And then it's that. And then we want nine scale modules to the north. Oh, hey, how'd you get out of there? That's not good. Well, It'll be all right. It's not going to be like this permanently. So nine scale modules to the north should pretty much fill up this entire interior area, but no more. If we had eight, for example, of either side, what I want to make sure is that this thing actually, here you go, buddy. Stop being a derp, would you? Uh, so if we took one away here, eight, that would pull back from there. We want to just make sure of that because otherwise it's going to start digging into our house, right? So scale module back there and eight that way should bring back. Oh, okay, so maybe it should be eight maybe. So if we bring this back one more, so that it's seven now. All right, now it's not above the water. Okay, cool. So bring this guy back up to eight. It's a good thing we checked. So scale module eight will turn you off. And then the only thing I need at this point Where'd my wood golem go? Is he derping it up somewhere? He found his way out because of this whole system. Where did you go, derpy golem? Anybody see him? Oh, well, I'll find him eventually. Let's activate this thing. I'm thinking I just happen to have a bunch of speed modules here, so why not, right? Might as well speed them up. And then we'll do um, the disintegration module and the collection module. So what this should do when I activate it is it should disintegrate all the seeds, or all the plants at least, and collect the seeds and store them in the chest. And as a matter of fact, I wouldn't mind having just a regular old ender chest for a moment. Or not, not an ender chest, I mean a regular chest. Just because I want to count how many of each seed I get, I want to make sure that the collection module is kind of smart and not stupid about this. And make sure we get, you know, more than one of each plant seed, which we should. So like so far we've got two squid it looks like, and we've got... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, lightning. I really wish I knew where that little dude went. These golems, man, I tell you. They like to run away and you never find them again. All right, so, you ready? Let's activate it, go. What we should see happening now, nice. And it shouldn't take long because we've got the speed modules in there. It should be doing multiple plants at a time. And it should be collecting them all. Beautiful. Look at that. Perfect. That is cool. And what I might even do... Alright, now that you're done, we can turn you off. And basically now all I have to do is change the turtle's code a little bit to emit a redstone signal for, let's say, 10 seconds, right? And uh, let's also get some stone. You know what, I'll go stone brick. That sounds cool. Where's my bag of goodies? Wand? There you are. 
this way, the plants don't get planted back here. Sweet. Look at that. This looks perfect. So now all we have to do is hook this thing up. Now let's see, how did we make out? Lightning plant seeds? If we have extra lightning plant seeds, I'll be happy. Nice, 24 of them. That's a really good sign. And we got five squid plant seeds, perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to see because that means now that we've got all this cool stuff ready to go. So we'll just put all these seeds away, put them into the AE system, which should then make them available to fill. Oh man, that's awesome. Look at all those repulsion plant seeds. I don't even know if I need repulsion plant seeds or not, but I'm happy to see that we have a ton. All right, so now we can replace this guy. So we confirmed that we're getting the extra seeds, which you know I was really hoping we would, and we did. So let's put this dude here. How's it going, Mr. Zombie Pigman? Still don't know where my golem went. Gonna have to track him down. He's around here somewhere, I'm sure. Either that or he died from the cactus. Sounds like the kind of thing he would do. And now we're good to go. So let's hook up our thing here. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna do one more thing. Dark cable. This is basically a cable which receives a redstone signal and turns on and off the connection to the rest of the network. So, for example, if we hook this dude up right here, and I guess I'll just replace this glass block, because I don't think I can put a lever on clear glass, right? No, of course not. All right, so now this guy is not connected. So you'll see here, for example, lightning plant seeds doesn't get refilled until it's receiving a redstone signal, then it's connected, and then it refills. Turn it off, it's no longer connected. So this will help out with our little tick rate problem that we have with stuff like this. So lightning plants not getting refilled. There we go. So on and off connection to there. Cool. All right, so creeper plant seeds, did we get... I mean, we have a few of them. I was really hoping we'd have more of them at this point, but that's okay. We really are that short on creeper plant seeds? Because I know we need a lot of those. That's one of those ones that you need a lot of. Oh, there's creeper plant seeds there. Why aren't you refilling them? Colon two. Oh, I think I might know what's going on. Colon 18, that's probably the issue. There's two types of seeds behind the scene. Oh, that's frustrating, let's see. Is there a way to fuzzy this thing? Probably not. All right, let me figure this out. I'll be right back. All right, while I'm working out there, it seems like it's a good time to make a wireless access terminal, so I'm going to need a Fluix Pearl. Do I have the stuff for that? Probably not. So let's see. I need to get some Fluix Dust, which obviously I could auto-create if I wanted to, but it's probably just as easy to do that. And some Fluix Crystals. There we go. And now I should be able to get myself a Fluix Pearl. Nice. Uh, then I can get this guy, Wireless Receiver. And with that, I can go ahead and craft glass, huh? Really? Give me a bunch of glass, please. Um, let's see, you there, wireless receiver, and the glass should start coming any moment. It's currently requesting sand. One of these days, guys, I'm gonna just stop the whole logistics pipes interaction with AE thing and just get it going all straight across. See, we have a ton of sand. What are you complaining about? There we go. Get rid of that. All right. Glass. There we go. Wireless access point. Nice. And then we're gonna want an ME wireless access terminal. So we're gonna need another one of these wireless receivers, huh? There 
middle click nice and then wireless access point is cool this is going to give me short range access to my system directly instead of having to request things through the mode orderer and wait for them to wind up in the ender pouch it'll just be like direct access to the thing Ooh, an energy cell huh all right And you, and then finally, this guy. And that's a conversion matrix. Just one, not 64. Cool. Nice. Let's see if I can charge this in the kinetic energetic infuser thing. I can, hooray! So all now I gotta do is grab that wireless access point that I crafted plug it into the AE system somewhere and link them. To do that, this is pretty easy. We just find a place to put it first. Uh, me and my mess everywhere, I know. Let's say right down here. Seems like as good a place as any. And then to get them linked, you'd think that the interface is on that block, but it's actually on the controller. You place this and it links it to this controller now. And I should be able to just open this guy up. Okay, cool. Now back to messing with these seeds that have different metadata values that I have to mess with. All right, let's run the plant program. I just like watching this thing run. Go plants, go. Now, of course, my golem is gonna get a little bit in the way of these plants being planted, but eh, that's the price you pay for having a golem. He's not that smart. For the most part, it works. Cool, and then back they go. That is cool. Oh man, that is awesome. All right guys, we're back and I've got good news and bad news. Um, basically the good news is that this system's actually working pretty darn well in terms of the way that it was designed to work. However, the bad news is that it's causing major lag on the server when it runs. And I don't know if it's because blocks are getting moved that shouldn't be. I'm pretty sure. I'm actually thinking it's the items that are dropping on the ground, all the seeds. Um, there's not that many items being dropped on the ground at once, but I do kind of have the impression that that's what's causing it. So I'm not 100% sure. Until I track down the cause of the issue, I'm going to go ahead and recommend that you guys avoid using this setup, at least for now. And, uh, you know, we'll see once I figure out what the problem is. I think it's just the massive number of seeds all at once. And my solution, if that's the case, is probably just to extend the delay in between, like, the move and drop. I'll just move it instead of waiting, like, a second or a second and a half and moving again. I'll wait, like, five or ten seconds to make sure that the seeds have a chance to plant before another set drops on the ground. But I'm not 100% sure. The other thing it might be is it might be the, the flying flower plant seeds getting moved by the whole, you know, MFFS system. That might also be the cause. Like I said, not 100% sure. Recommend not duplicating this setup, at least for now. Oh, I need more lava over here. And uh, wait until I figure out what the cause is. I'll let you guys know once I do track it down. And we'll, I'll let you guys build it when you can. So for now, avoid building something like this until I figure out what the cause of the slow, it slows down the server basically for some reason. So, but other than that, we're getting a lot of seeds. Um, the other thing is sometimes we're getting two types of seeds. So if we take a look in here, we'll see that we've got lightning plant seeds and lightning plant seeds. And this is uh, colon six and this is colon 22. So if I take the 22 ones and drop them on the ground and pick them up, uh, okay, those guys, do it doesn't do that for, but some plants will kind of fix themselves when you drop them and pick them up. So just something to be aware of. For now, um, now that I've got a whole bunch of seeds, over here I started working on what I need to get capacitors. So let me start getting a bunch of compressed iron ore. Let's see. Clear this out. How are we for compressed iron? Not so hot, actually. So let's get a stack of iron ingots, and I think that should be good for now. Wow, look at all those seeds we've got going on in there. That is cool. Oh, some people might have also noticed that a config setting got turned on that uses up my experience whenever I use 
an elevator. I think that was a mistake. It's supposed to be disabled, but I think it was accidentally turned on. It's a setting in open blocks. You can go find the, the setting and the config there. I'm probably going to go change that manually myself. Uh, so if that's bothering you guys, go ahead and just look in the open blocks config. You'll find the setting there that fixes that. All right, so you're running, you're building up some power. I'm going to let this thing uh, start up a little bit. He was kind of getting low on uh, charcoal, so I had to refill him a bit. Let me get a few pieces more. There we go. And we'll be back in a few. All right, guys, one other upgrade I went ahead and made here was uh, the chest here because it's kind of nice being able to interact with this uh, pneumatic pressure chamber, and you can't do that with the full-sized, um, block size bounding box of the hopper. Um, now, one other thing that I noticed, though, is if you dump too many items into this pressure chamber interface, like if you put a whole stack in it at a time, it becomes a problem, and it kind of jams up for some reason. Not sure if that's a bug or intended, but I went ahead and changed the uh, stack size that it pulls items out to be 1 instead of 64, which is the default. So instead of pulling a full stack at a time, uh, when I go to convert the stuff, you'll see it's only pulling one item at a time. And it stops because the door closes, right? So it, it closes the door, opens it up to let the items in, then this door opens, and a few more manage to make their way in. A couple at a time seems to be all right, but it looks like any more than 10 or so at a time is usually a problem. And if you want to speed this up, you can throw some uh, speed upgrades in there. See how much quicker it is? Oh, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's neat huh uh and the same for down here if you're you know trying to bulk do things if you're trying to do a bunch at a time you know you can throw some speed upgrades in there and it's a lot faster to operate it's just kind of nice to have these speed upgrades because in general it kind of speeds up everything that pneumatic craft does you can throw some speed upgrades into your air compressor if you want whatever um and as you saw i had some in the light boxes as well i might as well um place these light boxes back down so let's do that nope i always forget that you have to place these guys almost sideways it's a little unintuitive what you would expect, but it's not too bad. There we go. And then I can just hook this up. Remember, place down your, your, your blocks first before you go ahead and toss in your pipes. Otherwise, you'll just lose air from your system. Neat, right? So this guy's running again, and you can see I threw a couple speed upgrades in there just to make it a little bit faster to keep things going. So now, let's get started making our unassembled PCBs. Now, how many of these did I say I needed to get my first system let's take a look pneumaticraft i know i'm gonna need the assembly controller so that's three at least we're also going to need uh i believe two io units so that's five we're also going to need a laser that's six and the platform that's seven all right so it looks to me like i'm going to need a couple more of these uh unassembled pcbs so why don't i get ready to start cooking these up i'm going to Run upstairs, and let's grab some creeper plant seeds, which I should have a bunch of at this point. Just going to grab a few of each type. It really doesn't matter too much. And then I'm also going to want um, the compressed iron, which we'll get in a second. Only thing we need to worry about is opening this up and saying plastic instead of compressed, because it's only any kind of plastic will get pulled out of here. That's good. There we go. And this should be pretty quick to run because we've got those speed upgrades in there. Cool. And a couple of the times a good thing. Man, I really want a lot of those speed upgrades, but they require um, speed potions, and that's kind of a hassle to craft. Maybe I'll automate speed potions pretty soon, too. That would be fun. All right, so we got those guys. Cool. So let's get about six more of these guys so instead of pulling out plastic now i want to pull out the uh um let's just do that and we'll put these guys in cool there we go just wait for them to all transform And we'll be back in a few minutes once I do the UV light box thing. And the cool thing is that you can also use the speed upgrades in that UV light box to make that a little bit of a faster process. So let's see here. We should be getting that stuff soon. I'm just going to snag these speed upgrades out of here. Thank you. The only downside to using the speed upgrades is it does kind of really um, kill the usage of uh, compressed air. So you really need to have a solid air compressor going when you're gonna be doing this. 
So like I said, having a few more speed upgrades might not be a terrible idea. So while I'm waiting, I figured I might as well give this a shot. Let's see. Um, I would like to automate this a little bit. Let's go ahead and run some more stuff right along here. This might work. I haven't actually tested this, to be honest with you, but we'll find out. What I'm going to need here is a cover. And that guy can go right in between these. Nice. All right, so we're going to want a pneumatic servo on you. Uh, that's already been installed there. We're going to want it on there, and we're going to want it on there. And we're going to want it on there. So you're going to pull out of this chest everything. The only thing that's going to be allowed in here is going to be water bottles. The only thing that's going to be allowed in here is nether wart. And the only thing that's going to be allowed in here is sugar. Maybe? I don't actually know if this is going to work. I'm just kind of testing. Um, if it doesn't, it doesn't, and we'll live. So let's just test real quick. Water bottle. Oh yeah, let's ignore it. So you should pull out. Maybe water bottle has to go in here. Aha, it does, okay. And where can sugar go? Or no, not sugar. Nether wart. Can nether wart go into the side of these things? I'm not sure of the eye-sidedness rules of everything. Let's see. Apparently not. Maybe it can go in the top. Aha, so that's how it has to go, huh? All right. And then how do we get stuff out of the, this? Do we pull it out the bottom? Apparently not. Well, wait, let's put whitelist the water bottle. Hmm. How do we get stuff out of here? Does that have to come out the side? Yeah, I think that's get pulled out the side like that. Okay. All right, let me rearrange this then. All right, hopefully I set this up right. We're going to find out in a minute. So I'm whitelisting water bottles over here. I'm whitelisting nether wart here, and I'm whitelisting sugar here. So what should happen is it gets pulled out. The water bottles will go over to here in the side, and the uh, nether wart will go into the top here. It'll turn to awkward potions. Then I have to whitelist this thing to do awkward potions. I haven't done that yet because I don't have any, but we're about to brew some. And then um, they'll get pulled into here, which will be turned into... Um, yeah, they'll be turned into speed potions and they'll be good. So let's put one, two, three, and another wort and a sugar. Ready? Let's see if I did this right. And we'll just say ignore. He can pull everything out of there. There it goes. Cool, cool, and cool. So this guy is brewing up his nether wort beautifully. This guy has sugar in here waiting for the brewing stand to go. And then what I could eventually do is set this up to be like a, you know, little automated thing with AE, but well, we'll get to that. I might even wind up pulling it out the back instead of the side here, but for now this is a temporary setup. We want this guy and this guy as well. Are you guys done brewing awkward potions? Good. So we're going to set this guy, whitelist. Where did I put that awkward potion? There it is. Awkward potions only. We'll put this awkward potion back, and then we'll say to ignore redstone. So then the awkward potions should all be sent over here turned into speed potions. Don't you just love automating stuff like this? And yeah, I could use the auto brewing station, but the one downside of the auto brewer is that you get one potion per ingredient. With the vanilla brewing stations, you get three potions per ingredient. So I don't know about you guys, but I feel like that's the better way to go, right? Just a little bit more efficient. Um, all right, so now you guys are done brewing swiftness potions. So you know what I might do? Let's just do this. take this off of here. Since I want to tie this into AE anyway, let's get a import bus. 
precision import bus, you guessed it. Some cabling, an interface. I might need a little bit more cable, but we'll see. Not those cables, these cables. All right, so now, and then I can just teach this thing to um, one, two, three water bottles, one sugar, one nether wart equals three speed potions. Nifty, right? So we'll wind up putting the interface up here. And even though it's not really necessary to do this, I'm still going to wrench it downwards. And then this interface will get the ME encoded pattern here for swiftness potions. And let's just jump into bat form. Man, I love automating stuff like this. It's so much fun. And then the precision import bus goes on here. Hey, where'd you go? Funny bounding boxes. There we go. And your precision import bus will be swiftness potions. Hey, cool, there's my uh, cabling. I can just pull this right through here. Figure you guys wanna see what I'm doing, right? There you go, a little bit more light for you. Cool, and this thing should be able to pull out the side there, nice. Ready to test it? So let's get our remote order here. And I'm going to request speed potions. I've already got a couple, right? Let's request one, begin. And what we should see is all this stuff going. Cool, and you might already have, oh, you know why? Because we don't have the nether wart and sugar in the system. There we go. Sugar might have made its way in already, nether wart, there we go, now it's brewing. Oh, that's cool. Nice, right? And compact, too. While that brews, I'm just going to come over here, give myself some stone, make this look nice. There we go. So partially inside the wall, but that's fine. And now it's brewing up the sugar potions into swiftness potions, and that's nice. I like it. We're gonna need more nether wart and probably need more, um, you know, of sugar, but that's okay for now. I want one more swiftness potion. One more set at least. Actually, let me get nine more of them. I want to see how well this behaves. Requesting multiple at a time. So they should bounce back and see they're back stuffed now because this thing can only accept three at a time. And I'm going to go ahead and put you guys away because I'm done with you and you and you and you. And for some reason I had that in my inventory. I don't know why. And you and you and you. Cool. So once that's done, you can see the water potions going back or the water bottles that is. And it, you know, the, the sugar and the um nether wart stack so we're fine with that that is cool all right guys that's nicely automated we'll let that run for a bit and let's go downstairs and check on this last bit here so you guys should both be done right yes you are good so we'll grab these really did i i don't know how but i somehow made them all at once that's got to be a bug well then I got here just as my turtle was checking. So let's reboot him. And he should drop each of these. And they'll run. And in five minutes, we'll have all the items we need to get started. Well, mostly. We'll need a few more plastics, but I'll handle that off camera. And this thing's still running, doing its last bit. Oh, that is cool. It works perfectly. Nice. Only problem is you can't open the chest. 
Er, oh well. I could always throw the interface behind the chest if that really was a problem, but it's not. Oh, and look at that. I got so excited playing around with my swiftness potion design that we are way past the wrapping up point. So I'll let this thing run a few times. Um, then I need to get a bunch of different plastics because what we need in order to get what we want from new Metacraft, which is this nifty um, system of assembly table stuff, we're going to need lots of pneumatic cylinders, which is a lot of rain plants. So I want to make sure I have a bunch of rain plant seeds. Then we're going to need, uh, let's see, this is pretty easy. This is pretty easy. I think really all we need is maybe some propulsion plant seeds, and I'm pretty sure we have a lot of those, and yeah, no, that's cool, we're good. So lots of rain plant seeds. Let me make sure that's in my farm back there. I'm also going to do a little troubleshooting to figure out why the farm is being as derpy as it is, and then eh, we'll figure it out, and then we can automate it. All right, guys, this is Daryl20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Let's Play series, and take it easy.